I think it's time to go mobile. Uh, the housing market is, well, not exactly desirable right now. And even to rent a place, it's absolutely insanely priced. Uh, I'm just sitting here waiting for this thing to warm up because the engine on this van has to warm up so that parts can expand so there won't be as much piston slap. Uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm gonna go over to the back cave and grab the other van and then I'm gonna come back over here and we're gonna start shoveling things into, well, somewhere else. Uh, more to come. Okay, it's been a few days. I did not disconnect the battery last time I was here, but I think we should be all right. Let's see if the doors will open. Oh yeah, no problem. Normally the battery only is dead if this thing's been left for over a week or two at the most. Some of you may remember this uh, airport business center phone booth as uh, yeah. that was gonna be a workbench for me to use. Oh, hang on, I gotta help this lift. This chair is heavy. It'll barely lift this thing. <laughs> but yes, uh, this thing uh, was gonna be a workbench, but at this point, since I'm just gonna be staying here and there, probably gonna take it to Goodwill. Not sure what else to do with it. The thing's so heavy that I can't move it myself. Uh, so I also need to take this fabric press thing to Goodwill too. So we're gonna load up here and uh, this chair is huge. All right, so we're gonna load up here and, uh, and I'm gonna go to a Goodwill. Not the one that's closest to here because last time I went there and I had a piece of furniture like this, they would not reach inside my van to get it. Uh, they said, oh yeah, some of those people grabbed the wrong thing or whatever and we don't wanna get in trouble. I'm like, okay, it's all right, I'm telling you, you can take it. And they're like, no, we can't reach inside. <laughs> so I'm gonna go to a different Goodwill that's not in a nice part of town uh, because I'm pretty sure they will just reach in here and take this thing. And it's gonna take like two people. Oh. I guess I have this power chair base as well. I'm keeping this. Um, well, maybe I can get it up on the back seat. I don't know. Let's uh, let, let's see if we can get rid of this desk first, and then we'll uh, then we'll deal with that. Summer is is pretty much officially over here in Portland. Went outside last night and uh, went outside last night and. It just had that feeling in the air of it not being summer anymore. And of course it started raining and everything too. So hopefully the weather cooperates over the next, hopefully the weather cooperates over the next few days so that moving everything's not gonna be a problem. I don't really have that much stuff in the apartment. I mean, I guess it's kind of a medium amount. I don't know how much stuff people normally have. Did that close? Okay, I can never tell when the lift's all the way in. Okay, uh, got my coffee. Onward. Anyways, anyways, while I'm screwing around with this desk, uh, here's some footage from the last few days of kind of just some random things. <laughs> Nothing like wearing multiple shades of neon colors at once. All right, uh, C500 has been working out pretty well. This one has that camera on the back, and I and I had wired it up, so it's directly getting power from the chair's electrical system. Well, the problem is, occasionally I was putting this chair in storage, and I have to take up the back cover and unplug it, and I didn't want to affect battery life, speaking of which the battery in this is almost dead. These batteries in this camera, I think, are wearing out. Hang on, I got another one here. I am not having a lot of luck with camera gear over the last few days. I swapped the battery on the camera, and then I explained that I was going to be installing a switch on the back of the chair. And that's going to allow me to turn the charging circuit for the camera on and off easily. Uh, so basically I just have to take the back of the chair apart, solder up a switch, drill a hole, put it in there, 
and anyways, you'll, you'll see me doing that now. Okay, now we have this switch here on the bottom, which goes into this assembly, and that plugs into the Arnett circuitry, and we have our USB output to charge the camera. Now we just have to uh, stuff everything back in here. Okay, we got everything wired back up here, so now we can plug in our cable. Then when we hit the switch, you should see a red light down in here turn on. Mm. Okay, well you can't quite see it, but you can see that now the camera is powered up. Now this thing has its own internal battery, so um, it can run even if the chair is not um, connected to it for a period of time. I just wanted to have a method uh, to disconnect it from the chair in case I wanted to store this for a while and not have that much of a parasitic draw because that thing pulls a pretty decent amount of power at times. This little three-wheeled scooter thing here is gonna be an RC car project, but it has a single motor with a differential gear set on the back. So even in neutral, this thing is extremely difficult to move around. Now, I'm not gonna be spending much time on this, but what I've done is thrown a couple batteries in here. They're obviously way too big, but I wanna see if I can power this thing up and make it move by itself. Because trying to move this thing without it powered up is extremely difficult. Um, the RC car project is going to be happening after I get this other chair ready to go, but um, I'm just going to spend five minutes here and see if I can get the thing to power up. And uh, the reason I'm filming this is because it might get interesting. We shall see. This thing has a very basic controller that just sort of floats around in this box. I've already checked all the connections and they look like they're okay. Um, and these two connectors are designed to attach the two batteries and this white wire series them together. But what I've already done is I've set up these batteries in series with an Anderson connector and there's a 50 amp breaker between the two. So we have some circuit protection, but then also there's fuses here, fuses here, and there's another fuse down here. That's a circuit breaker. Um, so I've got this connector, which I'll be able to attach to the batteries. And then in theory, we can uh, jam the uh, wires in here and see what happens. And this is where things could potentially get interesting. So let me plug in the uh, front control harness. It goes in here somehow. How does this go in here? Ah, there we go. 
All right, that's plugged in. We'll plug in the motor and the brake assemblies. There we go. Uh, I'm gonna leave the charger unplugged just cause, you know, science. And this connector is hot. So let me verify our wiring here. Looks like, yeah, that should be good. So I'm going to, let's see. I think I need to cut, yeah, I need to cut these uh, ring terminals off the end of this and then we can just sort of jam the wires in here. Now this little three-wheeled scooter is a serious trooper. This thing belonged to a, a friend's dad and he always took it with us when we went out four-wheeling and um, well, this thing has done some pretty amazing stuff. I don't know if I can find any video clips of it, but uh, <laughs> this thing's done more wheelies and riding around on two wheels than anything else I know of but uh, he got a different style of scooter now, so he didn't need this one anymore. All right, we're just gonna clip these ring terminals. Now in theory, I can just sort of jam these in here. Safety third, right? Okay, that's in there. This one will go in here. Be good to make sure those don't touch each other because this whole thing will turn into an arc welder. I think this is the key to power it up, so that's unhooked. Let's plug it in and see what happens. There's uh, one, two, three, four, two fuses and three circuit breakers, so. Okay, no smoke. Let's stick the key in. Hey, the battery gauge went up. Does the horn work? Okay, we have horn. Turn the speed down. It moves. Yes! It's alive! All right. I have no idea how charged those batteries are. Um, although looking at the gauge, it's not really moving that much. All right, cool. Let's see, uh, let's see how this thing moves. I have a feeling this is gonna make a fantastic RC car or utility cart. Um, the idea is to just basically put servo controls on it I'll need an actuator that can, you know, move the steering wheel, but that's not going to be too hard to do. And uh, I just want to put a big platform on it so you can load stuff on and drive it around. Or take it off of sweet jumps. Well, hey, it seems to work. Awesome. It's not the fastest thing in the world, and I've been noticing that the battery gauge is dipping down quite a bit. I have absolutely no idea what the status of these batteries are. And this one's kind of, actually they're both kind of bulging a little bit. Um, I, oddly enough, I don't remember what these came out of. Um, but, the thing moves, and that was our goal. So, I guess, uh, let me grab some electrical tape and sort of uh, make this a little bit safer. <laughs> as safe as it can be with connections like this. And, um, actually, let me check and make sure the charge inhibitor wasn't causing a problem. Okay, now it still moves with the charger plugged in. Huh. All right, well, uh, sweet. Okay, managed to uh, plug that thing in over there. The little onboard charger it has seems to be working. According to the amp meter on the back of it, it says it's putting out about three amps. So split between those two batteries, that's a pretty safe charging level. So I'm gonna leave that thing plugged in over there for a while and uh, finish moving stuff around in here. I'm, I'm taking loads of things to Goodwill. All right, let's see how this works. See, no problem. You just have to come to a part of town where they will take anything you'll give them. And they're happy to do it. Back a few months ago when I was making the videos in relation to figuring out how fast this chair is going and calculating speed of these wheelchairs, I got a few comments from people saying, oh, why are you going through all that work? All you need is an app on your phone. Well, let me show you why that doesn't work. Thank you. 
Now, the problem here is which of these numbers do you believe? I know I'm supposed to be going 7.5 on this chair, and if I was trying to tune it to 6.1 or 6.2 for power soccer, I think you have to pay to get the, um, the app unlocked to get the tenths of a mile an hour. But the problem is, if we're fluctuating entire miles an hour on both devices, um, that's not gonna work. What I neglected to mention on the original video was the reason I need to very accurately calculate speed of these chairs is for power soccer. There's a very specific speed that the chairs have to go. And if you're flying across the country, you're traveling, and you show up and your chair is not set to the exact proper speed, you can potentially forfeit the game. So there's a lot of money and a lot of other things riding on these things being 100% accurate. And that's why using an app on a phone while giving you a general idea is not something you can trust. I mean, I've got two arguably of the highest end devices you can get here, and they don't agree with each other. And while both of them at one point said seven when I was going down here, is that 7.1 or 7.8? And the number didn't stay at seven, it was fluctuating. So how do I know when to pick the number that's on the screen? I put them in this thing so they're facing upright, because when they're on my lap, I mean, you know, someone could say, oh, well, they're on your lap, so, you know, the GPS is flat and you're obscuring a view of the sky. So that's basically it. Yeah, there are apps to do this stuff, but when you're trying to get a higher level of precision, um, actually taping off and measuring RPM over a set distance and time is gonna get you the accurate amount that you need, short of buying a wheelchair dynamometer, which I don't even know where you get those. They have them at the tournament games, um, but yeah, it, that's all there is to it. I mean, it's gotta be accurate. I'm just saying all that to give some context to what was going on. I'd gotten enough comments uh, about people saying that, you know, trying to be helpful, and I just wanted to explain where I was coming from there. So I'm not, I'm not trying to prove anybody wrong or step on any toes or anything like that. I just, I just wanted to give you the information as to why I spent so much time trying to figure out a way to precisely calculate how fast these chairs are going using math. Uh, so that's all. No, no, no offense to anyone. And now it's time to continue packing things. Let me tell you, I couldn't be happier to be leaving. And I'm sure that, well, I, I'm not gonna go there. Anyways, uh, the roommates have a lot of their stuff left to get. Actually, they've gotten a lot of theirs. I've gotten a lot of mine out of here. So we're just plugging away at it. We're gonna be out of here in a few days and uh, we'll move on to bigger and better things. Oh, and in case you're wondering, uh, this move and everything that's going on shouldn't be affecting the, if I scratch the door frame again, shouldn't be affecting the videos or the uploads. Um, typically, I try to go no more than four days uh, between uploads. Preferably, I would like to do every other day. So, just so you know, nothing's gonna be changing there. I'm gonna try and stick to the same schedule. And, uh, you know, it doesn't matter if I'm staying somewhere else or I'm in a hotel or whatever. Uh, we're gonna keep this up. So don't worry about that, I'm not going anywhere.